Hello, my friends. Welcome to this video on word walls, not just cute printables. Word walls are great because students can refer back to them in order to have some support. Adding new vocabulary to your word bank or word wall, it gives it a constant presence in your room. Now I want to talk about the difference between static word walls and interactive word walls. This picture here shows what a static word wall looks like. And by static, it means just that. It's uh, word walls that we print off and we just plaster them on our walls. Now simply placing a printable like this, it really doesn't have students engage with the vocab. It doesn't have them engage with the content. And honestly, I wanna point this out because I see this in many classrooms and it's a little bit of a pet peeve. Visually, when we go crazy with these word walls, it's literally too much information on the eye. I want you to like really look at this, right? This is too much information visually. And some students struggle with that overload, that sensory overload. So just in general, static word walls are an issue, but the fact that they're placed like this as well can be harmful for students. All right, let's shift and talk about interactive word walls. Research shows that it's helpful for students to create their own definitions and their own examples of the vocab term or word. Research shows that word walls honestly should be interactive. Now, in this interactive word wall, I want you to take a look at what the students did. The teacher did provide the word and the students used a visual example of what the word means. The only thing that's missing here that the students didn't put in is the actual definition. A definition is needed as well. With that being said, let's talk about what should be on word walls. Obviously words or symbols. There has to be some type of visual because students need those visual cues. And you can't have a word wall without definitions. If you haven't seen this in other videos, there are in other videos, but this is basically how the brain learns math and what happens in the brain as we're processing math information. So to help students internalize the ideas of these math concepts and terms, we really need to let them interact with the information in order for it to move towards long-term memory. That way the information is retained. So we really want to make sure that that engagement is happening so they can go through this sequence. All right, let's dig into some activities that you can use with interactive word walls. I'm obsessed with this app. This app comes from the Math Learning Center. And as you can see, it's the vocab app. As you can see, it, there's three components. There's the word, there's the definition, and there's the visual. Remember, we talked about those are all, those are the key components that should be on a word wall. Now, I'm not encouraging that you just print this out and plaster it on your wall. Now I wanna show you an activity you can use with this app. So you wanna project this app on whatever type of device that you have in your room, smart board, Promethean board, whatever. Okay, so here's how I start this activity. I show students just one part of the three sections here. So for example, I start off with this visual. I show students the visual and I just have them think about what vocab word or math term could this represent? And all students are doing is coming up with the word they think matches. Now, I provide students, they can definitely do this in their notebooks, but I provide students with like a large index card or even sentence strips. That's a great way to kind of create this. But students are seeing the visual and putting the word. Then I give the students the word. So it's almost like a slow reveal. I provide students with the word and then they have to adjust their guess, right? If they uh, had a different term, they can just kind of adjust it. And now I give students the opportunity to create a definition based off the word that they see and the visual that they see. The next slow reveals, I provide them with the definition, but then we do like a compare and contrast to what they have written down. I wanna walk around, I wanna see what they came up with. Um, I wanna see the different versions of what they feel compose means. And then what we do is we create one together. That way there's like a shared meaning and common ground that the class decides on. So maybe they really like something from Declan's statement and something from Daniel's definition and there's just like a, a, a merging of them. So as you can see through this activity that students are engaging with the term. 
there's reasoning and there's critical thinking involved with this, which again, most likely means that it's going to be stored in long term memory. What makes this even better, which makes I love this is that it comes in a different language. Now imagine how amazing this would be with our emergent bilinguals, right? So this would be a great way for them to connect vocabulary um, from their language to um, the English language. But I also want to point out, because this is not just in that way that we should be looking at it. This is a great opportunity for us to present this in a different language to our students that are not emergent bilinguals. Wouldn't it be great to have this next to cylinder and have students compare what's different about them? Oh, and what's similar? Oh, they're kind of like spelled the same. They look very similar. And how do you define it in Spanish and how do you define it in English and are there any um, things that are similar and different there? It's important not just for our emergent bilinguals to see everything in English, but it's also important for students that are not emergent bilinguals to see things outside of their bubble, to see things outside of English. Now, I'm not asking you to be a Spanish teacher. I'm asking you, I'm asking you to just open it up. It can't hurt. Now, another activity you can do with word walls is actually having students connect different word wall um, index cards or sentence strips, whatever you put them on. You want them to connect different terms together. So for example, here, if there was a word wall card that was based on multiplication and a word wall card based on division, students can grab those and actually talk about the connection between them. They can talk about how they're related. And of course, you want them to justify their reasoning behind that. But this is just an opportunity for students to not just think about the terms themselves, but to link ideas. The next activity is where you provide students clues. So you have a word wall created and you give students clues, a couple different clues, and they are to look on the word wall. They get to figure out what word goes along with your clue. So for example, if I gave a clue a shape with three sides, well, students can look at the word wall and hopefully pick out the word triangle. So again, it's making it interactive. Now, another activity are concept maps. I talk about concept maps a lot. So in this activity, you would have students work together. It's important that they work together to use words from your word wall and create a concept map or a concept web. They can even use that to work on a Fourier model as well. And there are separate videos on that, so you can check that out. But basically where students see the word decompose, they use that, they want to make that the main part of their concept web, and then they look at things that could be decomposed on their word wall. Oh wait, hold up, whole numbers could be decomposed, and then they would put it in here, and obviously it would have the definition and an example visual cue. I just didn't put that in here, but that's what you would want to see. They would look at their word wall and say, okay, fractions can be de decomposed. They would give an example of that. Look at the word wall again, oh, decimals could be decomposed, and obviously there's the definitions and the visuals for that. So students are making connections between big ideas. You want that to happen. And this activity is purely just based on the word wall that's in your classroom. Now, while it's helpful to have a word wall posted up in your room, because you do want students to refer back to it, we are in a digital world, right? We do live in a digital world. <laughs> So we want to create a word wall that's online as well. Now there's two ways to go about it. One is that students can physically make these word wall cards with the word definition and visual cue. And you can just snap a picture of it and post it online, almost making like a digital scrapbook. The other option is that you use something like Google Slides and give that to the students as um, their card. So students on a Google slide would create their word wall card. They would type in the word, they would give a visual example, and they would post a definition. And then by combining their Google slides, you are actually creating a vocabulary resource for them. And then it's always accessible. It's accessible when they're in school, it's accessible when they're at home. It's accessible when they're doing homework. It's accessible for the parents to see. So having it in a digital format is great as well. So I'm hoping that with this video, you can see 
that word walls are effective when they're interactive. I know it's convenient to print out a pretty set like this, but I always want you to keep in mind that pretty doesn't mean great. We want students to be hands-on with it. Well, that's a wrap for me. I cannot wait to see all the amazing word walls that your students create.